Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a quick video going over how to use alcohol activated colors. I was lucky enough to be shown how to use them from the get-go so I didn't have to struggle with understanding the ins and outs of them. But for those that have never used them or who have used them but don't quite know how to get the different subtleties with opacity, transparency, spattering and layering. There are many different brands, many different palettes, but the overall way in which you use them is the same across the board. I'm gonna show you using the complexion palette because this is the one that I use the most. And there's a good range of colors that are transparent and opaque in here to show you the differences. I use alcohol paints a lot because they can paint over pretty much anything. You can use them on latex, on, on scar wax, on gelatin. You can use them on foam latex, although I usually put a pack space down first because foam latex usually needs something really opaque and heavy, so packs will just do that quickly. Then you move on to these for the subtle transparent details. And I especially love using these on silicon. They go really great on encapsulated silicon prosthetics. If you're painting directly onto silicon that's not sealed, then you'll need to use silicon paints, which is the whole other thing. I can link a tutorial to that here as well. So let's get into it and I'll show you the different techniques that I use with this. So basically these are a mix of resins and pigments. And when they're dry, literally nothing will come off. It's only when you add isopropyl alcohol that it will activate the colors, which is why they're called alcohol activated colors. And when they're pretty dry and you put a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of pigment will come off. If you want them to be really concentrated, there's a couple of ways you can do that. If you absolutely drench one of the cells of alcohol and you let it sit maybe for five minutes, it will start to get deeper into the pigments and then you'll get a really thick, gluggy, opaque mess. So it can be a little bit challenging in that you can have like a light amount of color, come back later and dip it in and have a really thick, heavy amount of color. It won't be consistent. So I would always recommend when you're using alcohol paints to go from a cell into either the lid or into something like this white piece of paper so you can clearly see the colors that's coming out and how much pigmentation you have before putting it onto the person that you're painting. You'll find that some colors are more pigmented than others as well. So for example, this capillary tone color straight off the bat is quite pigmented versus the cool tone next to it doesn't have a lot of pigmentation. This is designed to be quite dark and opaque and this is designed to be quite light to adjust skin tones. So the transparent colors are gonna be your friends for skin tones. Lots of nice transparent layers are how you get nice skin tone pigmentation. And then for doing inside wounds, for doing dark capillaries, obviously you want the darker colors. If you have a dark color that you want to be a light color, all that you have to do is mix it in with some isopropyl alcohol. So you can do this in a lid. You grab a little bit of color, mix it into the isopropyl alcohol, and then you have a lighter color. If you have a lighter color and you want it to be darker, saturate it with alcohol, grab your brush, and literally just keep swallowing the brush to get all the pigments into the bristles. And once you do that, you'll have a darker coloration. For doing skin tones and for spattering, I find these little cheap chip brushes to be the best thing. It's kind of like a poor man's airbrush. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see there's a bit of length on this. I'm gonna cut it off and leave about a centimeter of the bristles on there. Ideally, you do this over a bin so it's not messy. Doesn't have to be too perfect. And then what you do with this is, so if I wanted to do some pink to adjust skin tones, I'm gonna to do it a bit more pigmented than I normally would, just so you can see it on the paper. Swell it to get some color. You need a bit of alcohol in here to spatter. Without that, you just get little tiny concentrated, really dark spots. You don't want that for skin tones. You want it to be more transparent and bigger droplets. So to do that, you mix it in with some more alcohol, which I'm gonna put into the lid here. And then there's two ways you can do it. If you have two hands, literally hold the brush with one, get your forefinger and pull the bristles back and let go. And that's gonna give you a spattered effect. If you have just the one hand, so if you're applying it to yourself, hold it and with your thumb, pull it back. And obviously the more pigmentation that you get into the bristles, the more this is gonna look darker. And then if you want it lighter, you add more alcohol. So if you add too much alcohol, there is a risk that it will just run everywhere. So if I fully saturate this with alcohol and I do this, there's a chance that it can get really runny and have too much pigmentation and just drip down when you want it to be spattered. I do like it to be a little bit more like this though, more spattered, wider. If you want really concentrated little tiny dots, say if you're trying to do freckles, you can get more pigmentation, less alcohol. And then something like that, you'll get like tighter, smaller, more concentrated dots. 
It's always important to clean your brush in between as well so you don't get muddy colors. The distance between the paper and your brush also makes a difference. So if you're trying to go over a wider area, I would get more alcohol, hold your brush further away. You can see how far that is in here. And then when you spatter, you'll get quite a large amount of distance. Um, I've made it quite concentrated here so you can see it. I wouldn't usually go this dark while spattering. And just like again, from afar, you get a big area covered and you can just keep going like that and you get the speckling. Then if you wanted to do a more concentrated area, so if I wanted just a little bit of color here, you can get less alcohol so it's not gonna to be too drippy. You can get really close up and you can even control the amount by doing a little bit just by very slowly releasing the bristles. Let's zoom this in. Again, just very slowly. You can really control the amount of spatter you get that way. Or you can go ham and you can have lots of concentrated color in just one area. What it usually looks like when I'm color correcting a prosthetic that's the wrong color is you can get a lighter or a darker tone. And again, I would do transparent spatters over it. And then I'll bring in the complexion palette, which is really good for adjusting the undertones. I find myself using the cool tone, the pastel yellow DT blush and the olive adjuster a lot. So I've already color corrected it with a lighter or a darker spatter and I need to adjust it to be slightly cooler. I'll get some cool tone. I wanna make sure it doesn't come out too dark, especially with blues, I want it to be quite translucent. So I'll dilute it quite a lot in the cap here. And then I will do just like a light layer of blue. If it comes out too dark, you can always pat it back with a finger. And if I wanted to do some pastel yellow, you can get away with a bit more pigmentation with these pastel colors. Make sure it's got enough alcohol in there to spatter. Because you want bigger droplets, you don't want little tiny concentrated droplets for it to look more like skin tones. And then if I was happy with that, I'd move on to the DT blush. Most skin tones have quite a bit of pink in them. And spatter that, that'd probably be too dark. You can see on here, it's probably gonna be too dark already. So just get that more alcohol out. So you get a lighter spatter and that will just give you this nice breakup of color on top of prosthetics. And then if I were doing a wound and I wanted to be a bit more bloody or pink on the inside. Come into these colors to get a more concentrated wash. Just fold the brush in there quite a bit. And then you can use that to paint on the inside. I also like these fluffy watercolor brushes as well. They can be quite nice for breaking up the skin, especially if you wanna do that little mottling that skin has. So again, I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter, but then you can bring that onto the skin and just use those broken up bristles to create a broken up effect on the skin. And on the white paper, it looks like this. But obviously you want it to be a bit more translucent than that. Just to show you again with the spattering, get some alcohol in there. This is it close up with just a little bit. You can really control how much you get out. Further away, you can get a little bit or you can go ham. It's like a medium distance. And if you wanted to get further and further away, zoom out here, you can get more alcohol on it. And you can just get really big droplets quite quick using this technique. This is obviously quite concentrated if I wanted it to be a really subtle color. I'll zoom in again, it'll look like this. quite quick. Thanks for watching you guys. If you have any other ideas for back to basic little quick videos that you'd like me to film, just gaps in the knowledge or things that you can't find on YouTube, let me know in the comments. I really like the idea of having little bits and pieces in between the bigger characters. It also means I can upload more frequently. Um, and just, yeah, things that are simple, but maybe people don't know how to do it or how to use different materials, whatever it is. I will be back soon. I hope you have a great day.